Hello, welcome to Cold War. This has been a long time ago. After a long time, I'm doing a tutorial. Uh, the past, uh, last tutorial would be my Ruby on Rails series, which I think it will go pretty well. And now uh, it's it's up to the continuation of the Ruby on Rails. So basically, the prerequisites for this, which means the um, uh, additional things that you already know uh, uh, before entering into the series, uh, which is uh, you, you gotta know about the SQL, definitely about uh, front end stuff like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and obviously Ruby on Rails, the core Ruby on Rails, how the MVC works, how the associations, database associations, migrations, uh, controllers, active records, and stuff like that. And then, oh, yeah, that's the prerequisites. So if you are good at that, just go ahead and uh, come to the series. Let me enjoy, let us enjoy. Uh, so, uh, so basically, that's the thing. If you know about those kind of stuff, this will go pretty smoothly, or else you should go, go to there and learn that and then come here. Okay, fine. Uh, so this is the course about uh, Rails, Rails API, which is uh, you're going to build Rails backend API and develop your client for anything, which is a phrase uh, for the API. So what is an API? API is an application programming interface. So it is the interface between the client and the server. So So, so uh, that's the API, which acts as an interface between the client and the server. So, to be more simple, with a real-time example, think about that you're going to a hotel and you're ordering some menu, uh, I mean some foods in the menu, and the waiter uh, waiter uh, orders, uh, I mean, a waiter notes all the menus that you order and he goes to the kitchen and he requests for the menu and then he delivers the food to you. So here the client is you and the kitchen is the backend and then the waiter is the API who acts as an interface between the client and the backend. Okay, fine. I hope you understand this one. So, what's the big deal on API? Okay, let us think about the real-time example. Um, think about a Facebook application. So, the Facebook has uh, created a web application initially using the PHP. So, uh, think about that Facebook has its own server. Facebook uh, has a really enormous amount of servers but it has its own server and inside the server there are many programming languages like PHP, uh, HBM, Hack and, but the core basic thing is PHP. Okay fine, uh, the, uh, for the web application for, you, uh, for our purpose of using in browsers uh, to uh, make uh, to visualize that as a website uh, they used PHP so we can view the website uh, which is up and running on the PHP server. Okay, fine. And there is also something called this, uh, some other applications on Facebook like iPhone, Android and Windows applications. Here you get a question. Wait, wait, wait. Facebook is made of PHP, uh, basically. And, well, the native applications of iPhone, Android, and Windows programming languages differ from the web application's language. How it comes to work? So, basically, iPhone uses Swift or Objective-C language to develop their applications. And Android uses Java. And Windows uses C Sharp or Ruby. So, how comes you're going to interact with this core PHP web server. Okay, here we get into trouble. So the server is made up of P 
PHP, basically. And here the application. So Meta Palm uh, has only the facility to code in Swift or Java or C Sharp. So how come it was possible? So here comes the web service, which means the API. With the web service, uh, they first initially they created a Facebook API, which is Facebook application interface. So the Facebook application interface basically made up of a web service like HTML, I mean HTTP, JSON, XML, or REST. It may be any web service. Uh, so what they are going to do is they are created an API and the web service which serves the data via all the devices. You need not to care about the programming language what programming language you use, what device you use, what kind of application do you make using the Facebook. So the Facebook API provides you all the information, including the authentication to your application. So that's the point. So now in this, we are going to create the Rails application as an API. Okay, fine. You, for example, if you are uh, know about uh, some languages uh, like Ruby on Rails. Uh, you only know about the Ruby on Rails, but your team has a kind of Java people, Swift people, uh, and C sharp people for mobile applications. So they really don't know about the API. I mean, sorry, Rails. So well, you just can create the Rails API mode which is, it is introduced in Ruby on Rails, uh, which means you can create the controller and model. You, you just only create the controller and model, which is the backbone of our application. Uh, yeah, obviously the model, which contains of database and tables, which is the uh, data and the business logic of our application, and the controller, which is the functionality of our application. You just create the controller and model, and you can use the views from any other service like mobile or web for example you can create a rails application as a backend as an api and you can create a mobile application by accessing the api uh, using the java swift or c sharp or even in the website also you can do something like this you can just create a rails api mode and create all the data modeling and the functionality of your application and for the view purpose you can use some javascript front-end technologies like ember angular.js react to interact with the api which would be pretty awesome and uh, you, you're not going to care about the um, pretty much about the front-end when you're creating the uh, data modeling you can you just your front-end developers can make use of it and then you just concentrate on the back-end, which is the API. So that's the whole point on Ruby on Rails API. Uh, I'm going to take uh, an, a sample application, which is pretty basic to do list application. Using that application, I'm going to develop the API uh, for that application. Let's go ahead.